everyone this is Jaswinder Kaur and today in this video we will be discussing about a very important topic that is the DNA replication. This will be the part one of this uh, topic as DNA replication is a huge uh, process to be discussed we will divide into various video parts. So in this uh, video we will be discussing about the uh, basic understanding of DNA replication and majorly focusing on the enzyme and proteins which take part in the DNA replication. So uh, starting with the DNA replication, DNA replication is nothing but to duplicate the DNA content. So why it is important because every time uh, whether it's a prokaryotic cell or the eukaryotic cell has to undergo the process of uh, but the cell division or can we can say the production of uh, daughter cells so uh, in that case each and uh, both the daughter cells should get an equal amount and accurate amount of DNA content that is why the DNA replication becomes important now every time whenever the DNA replicates it uh, undergo a process of semi-conservative uh, mechanism. Now, in case of semi-conservative mechanism, the parental strands are uh, responsible for the uh, synthesis of uh, new daughter complementary strand. So, they act as a template uh, for the synthesis of daughter strands. So, this is how the DNA replication occurs. Next, uh, if we talk about separately how the DNA replication occurs in case of prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So, prokaryotes are the simple uh, cell organisms. They have simpler stru cellular structure and their DNA is also lied uh, freely inside the cell. So, every time whenever they are uh, approaching toward the production of uh, daughter cell, so they are targeted first to uh, double up their DNA content so that each uh, daughter cell should get an accurate amount of DNA. So uh, this is how the chromosomal replication begins and you know you can see the DNA gets uh, doubled up and finally the daughter cells are produced separately and each daughter cell gets an accurate amount of DNA content. So this happens in case of prokaryotes uh, and if we say about the eukaryotic uh, cells, they have to undergo a process of cell cycle because there is nothing called any kind of binary fission uh, which occurs inside the eukaryotes. They are the more advanced and the complex cells so they have to undergo the process of cell cycle. Now the cell cycle have various phases out of which the important is the synthesis phase, the S phase because this is the phase where the replication process starts and the duplication of the chromosomal content gets. So this is how the replication occurs in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Now getting in, into the major enzymes and proteins which are there uh, you know taking part in the DNA replication. So first we will be discussing about the prokaryotes. So uh, as I said the replication occurs in both the cases. If it is a prokaryote or a, a eukaryote the replication will occur and there are different types of protein which take part in this and uh, make this process a very successful process. So uh, the very first protein is the DNA A protein. Now every time whenever the you know DNA has to divide or replicate it should start with the uh, like a specific region now this region is known as the ORI or origin of replication so every time when the replication has to start inside a bacterial cell the DNA A protein goes and bind on this ORI and start melting the DNA because yes obviously the replication will all only happen when the DNA gets melted down next is the DNA B protein now this DNA B protein uh, is kind of a enzyme this known as the helicase enzyme which starts the unwinding of the rest of the DNA now it will go move in this direction also this will move in this direction so that the unwinding occurs and the replication will be smoothly happen so uh, next is the DNA C protein it is also known as the helicase loader it will start loading the helicase to this specific location so that it is uh, such, uh, it is placed in a proper manner and start function start the unwinding of the DNA. Next is the SSB proteins to elaborate SSB protein these are the single stranded binding proteins. Uh, now what is the importance you know where every time when they two parental strands they separate out they have to be separated and exposed uh, there should not be any re-annealing or rejoining of this parental strand so to do so SSB protein bind in such kind of manner 
so that there is no rejoining happens next is the dna g protein dna g protein uh, is the protein which is also known as the primase it synthesizes the rna primers uh, which is also very important whenever we understand about the dna replication because dna polymerase cannot start or initiate the biosynthesis from scratch it needs primers so that with the help of their 3 prime overhang it can start the replication process next is the dna gyrase protein it is a type 2 topoisomerase and uh, the function of this type 2 topoisomerase is to re relieve all the tension which has been caused by the helicase enzymes so and whenever the helicase move in a particular direction it causes a tension ahead so to solve this tension to solve uh, the uh, positive supercoiling there is an enzyme called dna gyrase uh, which or relieve all this positive supercoils. Next is the DNA ligase enzyme. DNA ligase is the uh, enzyme which fixes the nicks which are formed. So every time whenever the primers are added, you know, in the uh, leading or the lagging stand has to be removed. And whenever they are removed, they leave behind some nicks. So to fix those nicks, DNA ligase plays an important role. Next and the very most important uh, enzyme in case of replication is the DNA polymerase. So uh, Prokaryotes have different kinds of DNA polymerase. Eukaryotes have different kinds of polymerases. So in case of uh, prokaryotes, they have polymerase 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And whenever we study about the replication, I think the first three pro, uh, polymerase enzymes are the most important because they only uh, take part in the chromosomal replication process. Uh, next is the RNA's H pro, uh, enzyme, which also removes the RNA primer. So RNA primer at the end has to be removed so that in place of the RNA primer, the DNA uh, is being incorporated. So this removal is done by RNA's H and at last, the most important is the TUS protein. TUS protein is the, to be elaborated, is termed as a terminus utilization substance. Uh, what it does, it, it stops the replication process, which is also very important because a replication cannot be continued for uh, several time. It has to be stopped and uh, to stop the dust protein interacts with the helicase enzyme and this uh, stops the replication process. So their interaction is responsible for the termination of replication. This is the pictorial uh, representation of how actually the prokaryotic cell undergoes the process of replication. There are all the enzymes which I have discussed in my uh, earlier video. There are each and every enzyme they are uh, showing shown here so dna ligase is here polymerase one is here there is the leading strand and the lagging strand we have rna primer we have topo isomerase we have helicase we have single cell uh, single stranded binding proteins we have dna polymerase three so every enzyme they have uh, shown over here Next, uh, we can see the uh, major enzymes which take part in the DNA replication in case of eukaryotes. Now, uh, the uh, enzymes are the same, only the name are different. The function is same and the names over here are different. Now, ORC is the very first uh, complex. Dif uh, different uh, uh, proteins uh, combine and make a complex which goes and binds to the ORI region. So these, these are the ORC uh, complex. Then comes the CDC6, which is the cell division cycle 6, which helps in the loading of MCM27. Now, MCM27 is a helicase protein. Then comes the CDT1. It's a chromatin licensing and DNA replication factor 1. It uh, binds with CDC6 and MCM27 uh, along with the ORC uh, and makes a re- uh, pre-replicative complex of the replication and also limits uh, the replication process not more than one per cycle. So uh, MCM2 is the helicase and it is elaborated as mini chromosome maintenance. Uh, then comes the RPA protein. These are the proteins. Replication protein A works as similar as SSB proteins. So they avoid the de-annealing of the leading and the lagging strand. Six is the PCNA. DNA clamp acts as a processivity factor so that the polymerases once bound does not leave the DNA strand. So they help the proper binding of the DNA polymerases. Topoisomerase again uh, is an enzyme which relieves all the positive supercoiling, the tension which has been caused by the helicase enzyme or I can say in this case MCM. Two, seven. Uh, next is the DNA polymerase. 
so uh, dna polymerases are uh, uh, in case of eukaryotes are various different types we can see there are 15 different types of dna polymerases over here uh, and uh, the mo mostly important one are the polymerase alpha gamma and uh, beta delta and epsilon these are the most important whenever we discuss about the uh, process of replication next is the fen1 enzyme this is the flap endonuclease 1 which removes all the rna primer just like rna's h protein which was there in case of uh, the prokaryotes then lastly the dna ligase enzyme uh, that is uh, we started in the prokaryotes as well. They uh, are fixing the, all the nicks which are uh, formed during the replication process. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, pictorial representation of eukaryotic replication uh, DNA. And uh, we can see all the different enzymes are being shown here. The RPA, the PCNA, polymerase delta, polymerase epsilon, uh, FEN1, DNA ligase. Every enzyme has been discussed over here. So... Uh, for further reading, uh, I can suggest following books uh, for you and uh, thank you for watching uh, and stay tuned for the upcoming uh, videos.